So this is our new regular feature. Um, it's got a zone and everything. Our upcycling academy with Laura and John. So anything you have in the house that you think, actually, I'm not going to throw it out. I am not going to just replace it with something new. I am going to repurpose or upcycle it. That's what this is all about. It's the in thing. Um, and today, apparently, we're talking about pianos and our favourite um, old wine bottles that you might have around the house. Um, so, John, what would you do with an old piano? Well, obviously, if it's a Steinway or a Baby Grand and it's working perfectly and worth thousands of pounds, just cherish it. <laughs> but if it's polish something it. that's... Yeah, polish it and look at it very carefully. Um, but if it's something that's maybe got the carcass ripped out of it, it's had better days... Because of the shape of it, it's screaming out for a lot of different things. You've basically got like a storage area, a top surface and a sort of ledge that's sort of desk area. So I was thinking you could turn it into a home office desk mm -hmm. or you could turn it into a makeup station with all your makeup along where the keys are. Put little hooks under where the keyboard is for all your hair dryers, tongs, all the things that I use in my daily hair projects. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> that's when we get back to the polishing. And maybe get, you know, if you go to Ikea, you can buy these lovely, it's like uh, four makeup bulbs and put a mirror where you put your sheet music. So it's Ooh. a lovely little makeup station. Ooh. Just about thinking again outside the box. So would you have to kind of, would you sort of rip the guts out of it? Yes, you would drip the guts out of it so that you could get, obviously you could build in the storage and you, you know, you've got any extra space in behind. If you're turning it into a bar or for books, you could take the panel off. Yeah, well, but see, Laura, I mean, John is wonderful. He comes along with his magic wand and he's got all these wonderful ideas, but how easy is that actually to do? It can be quite easy. I mean, the good thing with the piano when you're upcycling is you can keep the guts in, um, I always think it looks quite nice when you get glass or like a plexi plexiglass in place of the panels oh, and yes. then you can use the piano. You can even just take the lid off the keys, put plexiglass or glass over there. You can turn the whole thing into three really nice usable surfaces um, and you still have, because to be honest, the most expensive part of a piano are the guts inside. It's yeah, let's all think the... of a nicer word. Shall we call it the, <laughs> yeah. the, the workings? Well, it's usually, mechanism. It's usually mechanism. Yeah, the mechanism. It's the bridges, the strings, things like that inside are really beautiful and they're usually like handcrafted pieces. So if you are taking them out to gain more storage, I've seen some lovely ones where their bottom compartment's been turned into a dog bed and then the top is like a bureau where you can just have a writing desk and the inside's if you look on any Pinterest or like Google or anything like that, you can see that people use the insides for the most beautiful things. Like the strings and the bridges have been used as kind of like a lightweight shelf on the wall. Keys are used to be turned into frames. It's always a shame to take apart something that has had so much time being handmade. So I think keep what you can. But the frames of a piano are so sturdy, lots of joinery, always a really good wood used so it can be turned into something that can keep on going forever. Yeah, no, they, t they tend to be beautiful things, pianos and if people, you know, do want to get rid of them, hopefully they pa if it's working they pass them on to somebody else who needs a piano but I suppose, mm -hmm. you know, they sometimes get to the point of no return. Um, if you had a baby grand piano, if you had one of those, John, um, and it wasn't working, whatever you decided to repurpose it, um, any ideas what you do with that? Well, I'm so glad you asked because I can see this very show-offy line. When I was in Udaipur in the Bougera Fort Hotel, oh! the owner had turned an old baby grand into a bar itself. So he'd actually lifted the lid uh -huh. and inside uh, you had buckets with ice and all the chilled wines and a sort of prep area where the keyboards are. But what he'd also done is he had lovely bar stools all around it. So you actually sat around it, didn't go half, didn't have to go very far to get a top up, but it was just a lovely, and he painted it all silver. So obviously it was something that wasn't working anymore. It was a beautiful shape and it's in this stunning big drawing room in the middle of India. And I thought, what a really good mm. use of an old baby grand. Oh, wouldn't you just love to have a cocktail sitting there? How lovely. Mm. And by the way, see that B&B &B in our drossing that you're in? Have you got a job in the kitchen? <laughs> <laughs> I'm upstairs picking the bubbles off the candle, but I'll be down in a minute. <laughs>
Recycle. That. Recycle, recycle. <laughs> and what on earth are you going to do with your old empties, John, that falls into the category of upcycling? Well, a lot of people are very creative. And if you buy a kit, you can actually chop them and chop the bottles down and turn them into a nice set of glasses. Or you could use the top to make it into like a pendant light fitting by putting a cable through. But I really like a simple option. And I did do this in my flat in London almost 25 years ago because I was having quite a lot of empties there being a <laughs> young man then. I turned them onto their bottoms and I had a look at the bottoms because right. I then stacked them up facing to all the bottoms of the glasses, which sometimes you'll see it's almost like a bullseye effect. Uh -huh. And by just doing a little layer of it, could either, I did some with Paul's, um, um, what it's called, some, like a light cement, and actually built a wall stacking the bottles on their side. So when you put a light on the other side, it looked actually quite like a Moroccan light. So it was a good juice, and some of the bottles were blue, some of them were mm. green, some of them were white, and it was just a nice use of an excess of bottles that seemed to follow me around. Very, strangely, strangely. Uh, uh, Laura, mm. what do we do with our empties? Any suggestions? Yeah, I see a lot here where people have used those kits. They're about 20 quid online. They're really easy to use. You just need a bit of sandpaper afterwards. And there's loads of videos on how to do it. If you have clear glass bottles, especially, so like a white wine or a rosé usually come in the clear glass bottles. And you can make some really nice, um, almost like chandelier pendants, rather than just one where it's obvious it's a bottle. If you cut them to different sizes, I've seen that in a lot of viewings I've been in where people have made their own. I think it was like a fad here for a while. And it looks amazing because you can put in some really nice bulbs inside ones that are dipped in gold, silver, copper, etc. And um, I've also seen a lot of ones where it's tables or side tables where the legs of the tables are glass bottles. Um, there's a really big trend at the moment with curved glass um, side tables. I think it's a, a Norwegian designer that does them, but it's to mimic this style of a bottle as the legs. And you can just make your own instead of spending two grand on it. Um, all you do is just chop the top off, um, sand it down, and then a curved MDF top on top. If you, again, use clear glass bottles, it always looks that little bit more elevated, a little bit more minimal she kind of a look to it a lot of people think upcycling wine bottles is immediately just green bottles but the clear ones can actually look really nice and really in keeping with what's kind of going on with um glass at the moment in interiors you know you'd have to be pretty handy though wouldn't you to be to no, be able to do that God, no no no, no the, the cutters are um it's usually they often advertise them as like school project even though i wouldn't let a kid near a glass cutter but anyway um, <laughs> and you it's pretty it's really simple to do you just have to be careful follow the instructions properly and mainly with glass bottles it's just taking off the, the top of it but you know when you're getting a bulb that you kind of want to self-water itself to get it going before you plant it in the garden my grandmother would do this all the time she had these special vases for it if you just take the top off a wine bottle turn it upside down with the neck of the bottle facing back down into it fill it with water pop your bulb in it's going to be able to self-water inside there and then be ready for your garden as well Ooh. so you can act you know the ones that you'd spend nowadays a fortune on getting those um, so you can kind of start your bulbs off and then also I see a lot of people um when you look online with upcycling bottles, if you turn them on their side and you use a glass cutter that you can face into the bottle, you can just um, cut out the top and then it makes a gorgeous little hanger for herbs or smaller flowers in the garden as well. Wonderful. Brilliant ideas there. Yeah, and I mean, actually, you, you're saying that, particularly, I suppose, in more Mediterranean gardens, you see lots of kind of glass bottles mm -hmm. that will have little tea lights in them, etc., etc. But you probably go to a garden centre and buy those when you've got them in, in John's bin. There's no need to go. <laughs> <laughs> and Read buy them my bins yeah, I know. on a regular basis. <laughs> but listen, we've got to go because John, you're going to get fired from your shift if you don't go. Um, my ferry's back, off as well. Back into the kitchen. <laughs> 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 Just go around wherever you are, dross and chopping up pianos and saying, it'll be fine, Mrs. It'll look lovely when it's finished. <laughs> I'll cut to the chase and put the wood straight in the fire. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Laura and John, thank you very much. Speak to you next week.